<laughs> Crazy. Let's continue to this face right here. AOC, who got blasted on Twitter, and they were calling him a, a, a Alexandre Ocasio et Smollett. <laughs> Look at let me see if I can find this picture. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Alexandria. Let me see. Ocasio Smollett. Let, let, let's see if I could find this picture that was going through the internet. Again, this is for jokes. This is for jokes, guys. It was a meme that oh there you go. <laughs> ah yeah, yeah. Look at this. Look at this, guys. This is crazy, man. Look at this. Just look at this. Look at this. <laughs> again i'm i'm not laughing at nothing that happened to her i'm not laughing at none of that i'm laughing at the situation i'm laughing that people don't believe her because they they know who she is um they know who this woman is right and and because somebody comes out and and they say this lady Look at this. So she's giving her her just just look at look at the way she says it. The way she says it puts doubt in my mind, to be honest, straight up. Look at this. Bang, bang, bang. Like someone was trying to break the door down. This was the moment where I thought everything was over. Do you see that? Like, look, I'm 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 able to pick up on body language right i'm able to pick up ex face expression and and to me this might not be true and i'm putting this up here to me just that little there when she's like um uh um uh this is the moment where i thought it would be um over it seems like she's just like making it more dramatic than it needs to be again i might be wrong but it that that's just the way it's coming off on her and then so uh, you know i'm pretty sure like you guys know this already but right so some other lady some other representative right in the house of representatives was there and say that it did not happen the way you're talking about right and then she brings up and this is the funny thing right you know who this lady is like we know who alexandra ocasio cortez is we know she likes to talk a lot we know she's always she's doing her lies and this and that so we don't we don't know to trust her based on just her her past right based on who has she been and what does she do right if it was somebody else who has like a trustworthy record, we don't know if it's, you know, it might be different. But again, and I'm not discounting anything of what she might have gone through. But then some other lady come, comes out and says that, um, no, she was at another building that it actually takes about seven minutes underground to, to get to another building. And the person that was knocking at her door were some cops. Again, that might make her afraid and I understand. But it's not like. She has been talking about this since it happened. She's telling Ted Cruz, like, you, it's because of you that I almost died that day. I'm like, like, like she's like, and she's like the only one talking about this. And not only that, but let's talk about Talib. Rashida Talib cried today on the thing. And again, look who is the same people. It's like, if you have, if you have, look, if you have three children, right? You know that there's one, there's a troublemaker one. Like, I was the troublemaker in my house. I was, yo, it was, yo, Valentine and this one. Valentine and the other one. Valentine always, constantly, all the time. So my parents knew, my father knew, that if there was going to be problems between the siblings in my house, Valentine was one of them, <laughs> plain and simple. Because just of my history, right? So we're going to have the, the, this whole situation, knowing who AOC is, and now today... Rashida Tlaib was crying on the floor, which I do, again, I do not take anything away from anything, any trauma that she might have uh, gone through. But when it's like Rashida Tlaib, the, she doesn't care. Like this, this girl was, uh, when, she, they, when, they, when, when they got her in at the beginning of, uh, of her term, when, what was it, like two years ago? She was like, we're going uh, to impeach this mother effort. You guys remember that? There, I don't have pity for somebody like that. I, 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 I don't. But let's, let's see what... Uh, this rep, I forget, Nancy Mace, says regarding the whole situation that AOC is explaining. I mean, I thought I was going to die. So on the floor. Sadly, less than 29 days later, with little to no accountability for the bloodshed and trauma of the sixth, some are already demanding that we move on or worse 
attempting to minimize, discredit, or belittle the accounts of survivors. In doing so, they not only further harm those who were there that day and provide cover for those responsible, but they also send a tremendously damaging message to survivors of trauma all across this country. Hmm. Right. So she says her little uh, thing on Instagram. And then on top of that, she asks the, what, what she claims is to be some type of sexual assault. Right. OK. Again, nobody's taking anything away from that. That, that happens to them, to her. Right. But why are you putting that there? Right. Is it for people to have pity on you? Is it for people? Do you want uh, people to uh, learn a lesson or is it just for pity? That you're saying that you were sexually assaulted, and again, this is what takes that this is what takes away from the whole Me Too, Me Too movement. People taking it to the extreme, and it takes validity away from people making false claims from real things that actually do happen. When you come, people that lie, right? I've had, I've had, um, uh, I've heard stories, right, of family, my family members, right, that uh, have faked. Um, sexual assaults, right? Sexual touchings and whatnot from my family members, right? Like family members of mine, right? And it, it turns out to be fake. It was just a young girl. She didn't want her 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 father or her ex or her her stepdad to be with her mom. Some 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 craziness like that, right? I'm like, they do this. They're young girls, ten years old, eleven years old, twelve years old. So it takes away from when that actually happened, which it does, right? So, I mean, it's like, that's the whole, sometimes the Me Too movement gets, it loses esteem because of that, because you you just exaggerate stuff. People find out that it's like, like this person is going to say that, hey, listen, some, some, something like that happened, but not what, the way you're saying it happened. So let's bring in Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace from South Carolina. Congresswoman Mace was the first woman to graduate from the Citadel. She's a brand new member of Congress. Good, good afternoon to you, too. I want to ask you about that whole event yesterday mm -hmm. uh, where people... AOC might be hating on her because she's pretty, too. ...could sort of step to the podium and talk about their experiences. You know, it felt a little bit like a, a therapy session. <laughs> so they had in Congress, they had like a therapy, almost like a therapy section. People will come up to the podium and say, oh, no, I was here at the day of the insurrection and, and this, that. And, and we speak into a microphone like these people are adults. Like, OK, if they have some type of problem, OK, go to the doctor, do all that stuff. But like for, to, to, to go in Congress, right, and to, for everybody to hear their stuff and say and and hear them out, speak and voice their opinions, like voice your opinion to a psychiatrist who's going to be able to help you. What is Congress going to help you? Congress might be like, yo, this crazy lady again, plain and simple. That's this, that, that's what they might be thinking. Um, nobody belittles the how frightened was that that this was politicizing a lot of what happened. I mean, if you politicize a traumatic event like this, and I've been very vocal about the events of that day, and I have not belittled or minimized anybody's experiences whatsoever. I was uh, I was fearful that day. I talked about being barricaded in my office. I've talked about the trauma, and trauma affects everyone differently. And if and if folks needed to have time on the floor to express their feelings, their emotions, the trauma that they experience, and they have every single right to do so. But what we don't have the right to do is either allow the media to exaggerate what actually happened or to peddle in, in false... And again, and again, listen to this. Let's be objective about this, right? We know who AOC is, right? Let's try to be objective about this, right? I'm not taking what this lady is saying either Nancy Mace, I'm not taking it as 100% truth, 100% fact, and just throwing away whatever AOC is saying. But the, the thing is that knowing again, and this is so important, guys, this is what you have your, your, who you are. You need to have a squeaky clean personality and a squeaky clean resume when it comes to you. That way people believe you, who you are. Right. And I, I take that back to the analogy of when I was little. If I tell my dad that some one of my 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 siblings was bothering me, my dad would be like, uh, he needs proof from me because he knows I'm the troublemaker. AO, everybody knows AOC as the troublemaker, the one who's constantly going on social media and, and grieving out and she's there and she's and, and you know drinking wine or, and she could do all that stuff, drinking wine on her Instagram and and talking to the people and talking to this and all that. So some people might take that as oh no, this this girl just wants attention. Plain and simple. And then this girl comes out who says that she was next to this woman and said that the person knocking on the door was a police 
uh, Capitol Police officer, it just takes credibility away from this person. Rumors or false facts that happen. I, I, I live in facts and not fiction, and there were no rioters uh, in the hallways uh, coming to our offices that day. We were fearful that that might happen, but that mm -hmm. never happened. And we were seven to 10 minute walk away from the Capitol Dome where the violence was transpiring. This was a terrible day in our nation's history and one that I never want to witness again. That's that. We're gonna leave it there because the time is is flying, man. I wanna know. We got. We're gonna get. Let's get to it. I don't wanna. I can't react to the whole thing. I just. I just found this video exactly when I was gonna uh, start this. Uh, this right here. But this is Rashida Talib. Just go. She and the hearing session that they were talking. She goes into again, and it's like the people from the squad. It's like we know who the squad is. It's like, is it real? But these people are troublemakers. So is it real? Is it not real? Is it? Is it not? This is what happens when you're a troublemaker. You, your, your, your words are not taking 100%. Let's just get a little bit in, in, into it because it's already 848 and I'm going crazy here with you guys, man. I'm going to have to amend this schedule because the problem is for the people that are here, thank you so much, is that I go into the uh, Spanish show with my wife on my other channel on uh, 915. But let's look at t uh, Rashida Talib. Let me see if this video, okay, is it's buffering. Buffering guys, wait, wait, wait. Let's try to let's try to do this all over again. Wait, up. all right, all right. So and look, so she's crying. AOC is right next to her. I mean, it's like, it's like. Thank you so much to my colleague for her incredible courage. I asked her to go last because I get. Um, because this is so personal. <laughs> This is so hard because, as many of my colleagues know, my closest colleagues know, on my very first day of orientation, I got my first death threat. It was a serious one. They took me aside. The FBI had to go to the gentleman's home. I didn't even get sworn in yet when someone wanted me dead. But you guys remember, uh, and again, this is why sometimes you don't have pity on women like this. You don't, and men or whatever, you don't have pity on them because when she got sworn in on her first term, she got famous for saying, Google it, don't believe me. We're going to impeach the mother effer. Talking about Donald Trump. So how do you feel pity for this person? Like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm trying to be as human as possibly I can. Like, you don't, like... Doubts just come in your mind. This this person is very, uh, she exposes some savagery when it comes to people that she doesn't agree with. And now I'm supposed to have pity on you, my dude? I Like, I'm supposed to have pity on you because you're crying on Congress? Like, seriously, like, I so ha I'm supposed to have pity on you because you are, you had this traumatic experience. I, I understand, and I don't take away f anything from that but you're gonna have to show me some receipts show me where you were show me that you were there because frankly i don't believe you just because of who you are for just existing more came later uglier more violent one celebrating and writing the new zealand massacre and hoping that more would come another mentioning my dear son adam <laughs> mentioning him by name each one paralyzed me each time. So what happened on January 6th, all I could do was thank Allah that I wasn't here. I felt overwhelming relief, and I feel bad for Alexandria, so many of my colleagues that were here. But as I saw it, I thought to myself, thank God I am not there. I saw the images that they didn't get to see until later. My team and I decided at that point. Okay, so she wasn't. She wasn't even there. She wasn't even there. I mean, I, I mean, you, you guys take what you want out of that. I mean, I don't. She wasn't even there. AOC is right next to her. I, I mean, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, what am I supposed to do? That, that's all I'm saying. All right, let's, uh, let's put on these lines. I want to hear your thoughts, guys. Uh, thank you so much for the people that are here. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Uh, let's put this on. The number to call 646-470-1077. I am strapped with time today, so please, I, I, don't, I hate cutting people off. Let's try to keep it to around the five-minute mark for the people that call in. I want to talk to you guys, so please.